After the success of King Kong vs. Godzilla and of course the success of Mothra's solo film, Toho Studios decided there's only one logical next step. Let's put them both together. And that is how we got to what we are looking back at today. It is Mothra vs. Godzilla. While she did cause a lot of destruction, the Mothra solo film indicated that Mothra was doing what she was doing for right reasons, and that she would be a good person character. That is true in this movie as she plays the babyface opposite to Godzilla, who is trying to destroy her egg. Obviously, she's not going to let that happen, so, you know, gotta fuck up Godzilla, because, you know, you're not going to destroy my egg. But what will hatch from the egg? Will it be more Mothras? Will it be triple Mothra action? What's going to happen to this Mothra? It's a pretty classic good versus evil standoff, and I gotta say, this is a little early to say this, I should probably wait till after the review is over, but this might be the best of the Godzilla sequels so far. One of those reasons, too, is that the human characters actually weren't annoying in this one. And here's a really, really cool fun fact about the two male leads in this movie. Akira Takarada and Hiroshi Koizumi are the male leads in this movie. And they played the main human protagonists in Godzilla 1954 and Godzilla Raids Again, respectively. That's right, they took the two main protagonists from the first two Godzilla movies, gave them new roles, and put them together in this movie. And as someone has, who's becoming a mark for the franchise, that's a pretty cool fun fact right there. Of course, there was human antagonists as well, and they honestly were pretty good as well. I was very pleasantly surprised by the human acting in this movie, especially compared to Godzilla Raids Again and King Kong vs. Godzilla. The human acting was better in Mafra, so maybe they took a page from that. Speaking of which, the Peanuts who play the Shobin, the twins who, gar who are the guardians of Mafra, are back again for this one as well. But obviously the biggest question when it comes to two big monsters fighting each other is who's gonna win? Well. We're going to find that out right now as we take a look back at Mothra versus Godzilla. Well, this movie kicks off pretty fast and furious as the island of Japan gets hit by a giant typhoon. The next day, the civilians survey the damage, and reporter Ichiro, as well as his young photographer Junko, come to take pictures of the wreckage. While they're looking for the wreckage, they find some multicolored scrambled egg looking thing, which they can't quite explain. There's bigger problems than that, though, as there's a giant egg that's appeared in the sea. What? This, this is not a giant egg. And oh my god, there's a giant egg in the sea. Yep, it's just it's a giant egg. Just straight up giant egg. The local fishermen, who apparently own the beach, decide, hey, let's go get the egg and put it on the beach, because then the egg belongs to us, because that's how property rights work, I guess. The reporter duo go to the egg and meet up with Dr. Shinsuke Miura, who is testing it for science and stuff. Miura can't test the egg for long, though, as the fishermen have sold it to a businessman named Kumayama. You get the vibe pretty early that Kumiyama is going to be the bad guy, as well it appears he underpaid the villagers for the egg, and he intends to keep it open to the public for a small fee. Our heroes are suspicious and they begin to suspect someone else is pulling the strings. They're pretty spot on in this assessment as Kumiyama is actually working with a man named Dr. Torahata. Torahata's got big plans. He's going to build an amusement park and put the egg right in the center, where eventually they'll hatch it. There's someone who doesn't take too kindly to this, though, and it's the Shobin twins, who arrive and plead with them to give the egg back to them. Instead of having a conversation, they try to catch the twins, which doesn't go well for them. The twins then meet with our heroes in the forest and inform them that the egg belongs to Mafra and that she needs it back. Turns out because of the typhoon, the egg washed off Infant Island and rolled through the sea, eventually ending up where it is now. Our heroes agree to help try to get the egg back, and Mothra is so grateful that she's here to greet them in person. The next day, our heroes meet with Kumiyama and Torihata and try to convince them to give the egg back. They are unsuccessful, and then show them the girls, which they have put in a box. Instead of offering to give the eggs back, the villains are like, Hey, why don't you just sell us the girls instead? Obviously, our heroes are like, Yeah, nah, son, and they dip out of this. Our hero trio then come to the conclusion that there's really nothing else they can do, so the twins, along with Mafra, decide to leave and return to Infant Island. Meanwhile, Kumiyama, who is making preparations for his upcoming amusement park, has placed the egg in some sort of giant glass enclosure. Things aren't going all well for Kumiyama, though, as the fishermen are getting pretty restless that he hasn't paid them for the egg yet. He calls Torahata about this, who is able to successfully swindle him into getting his own money tied up into it. Dr. Miura, meanwhile, has done tests on the weird-looking egg thing that the reporter duo found, and apparently it has a lot of radiation on it. They go back to the beach, which has been drained of all the water from the typhoon, and try to find the source, but they can't find any more radiation. Huh, that's weird. Should the mud be moving like that? Oh, crap. Yep, looks like we found the source of the radiation, everybody. It's motherfucking Godzilla. 
Well, time for Godzilla to do Godzilla things. He moves into Tokyo and starts destroying shit, because that's just what he loves to do. As Godzilla is attacking, our heroes are trying to decide what the next possible step would be to try to stop it. One of their reporter friends says, hey, why not just get Moffer to come fight Godzilla? Which is actually a really freaking good idea, and our heroes decide to go to Infant Island to do just that. They arrive and are ambushed by the natives who are doing red face this time, which is... better? Oh, okay, never mind. Most of them are still doing the blackface thing. It's, it's not better. It's not better at all. Anyway, they meet with the villagers who are like, hey, fuck you guys, you guys bombed my island and stuff, so yeah, we ain't gonna help you, we would like you to leave now. They meet with the twins instead, who also apparently cannot trust them either. But then Junko gives an impassioned speech about Jesus and stuff, and the twins agree to enlist Mafra for help. They do this by literally singing Mafra her theme song, because she really likes her theme song. The twins let them know that not only will Mafra help, she will give all the strength she has left, as she is going to die soon. That is another reason why protecting the egg is so important though, because the egg will hatch new Mafras, from which the legacy can be carried on. Meanwhile, the military is mobilizing a plan to stop Godzilla. Oh crap, please no, don't bring out the tanks for the fourth movie to Oh god damn it! Our heroes, who somehow got home pretty damn quick, arrive back at the site of the egg in search of Kumiyama. Kumiyama's not there, though. He's at Torahata's place, confronting him over the money he swindled from him. Kumiyama loses his shit and beats the unholy hell out of Toriyata. Kumiyama then starts jacking Torihata's money, but Torihata's got worse things to worry about as Godzilla's heading right towards his apartment building. In a panic, Toriyata grabs a gun. Well, what are you gonna do, shoot him in the head? Oh god, well yeah, that's exactly what he's gonna do. Torihata attempts to escape the apartment with his money, but unfortunately he gets tail whipped into oblivion, and that's the end for him. To make matters worse, Godzilla has found the egg, and he begins tail whipping the glass enclosure as well. He then gives this egg, like, the craziest death stare I've ever seen in my life. Like, oh my god, I don't know why Godzilla hates this egg more than he's ever hated anything, but holy shit, he hates this egg. Or maybe he's just really hungry, I don't know. It doesn't matter either way, as Mothra's here to save the day. And what proceeds is somewhat surprising. Mothra's kicking Godzilla's ass. She drags him away from the egg by the tail, claws at his eyes, and then uses her yellow dust attack to try to keep Godzilla down. Unfortunately, it's not enough, though, as Godzilla uses his atomic breath to laser Mothra's wings. In the final act of desperation, Mothra knocks Godzilla on his ass and flies over to the egg, where she sits down next to it and dies. Godzilla doesn't know what to do with himself now, so he's just gonna move around aimlessly some more. But oh shit, here comes the military again. Oh no, don't bring out the rockets. Oh yeah, we got the rockets. Not only do we got the rockets, but we got fire. Not only do we got fire, but we got a giant electrified fence. Ever heard that one before? Surely it'll work this time. Guess what? It doesn't. But never fear, because we're going to do the same shit the next day. We got more rockets. We got another fence. But it's different this time, because we got nets. That's right. Take this net. Oh, how about two nets? Two nets ain't enough. How about a third net? And oh my god, maybe the nets were the key all along, as it's actually working. Nah, just kidding. Godzilla destroys the nets and the fence, and the military has failed once again. Meanwhile, back on the island, they're trying to evacuate people, and a school teacher is freaking out. Why is he freaking out? Well, he's left his students on the island of Iwo Jima. Why is that a big deal? Oh, well, no, no reason really, except Godzilla is going right for Iwo Jima. But never fear, the twins are singing and shit in an attempt to hatch the egg. And the egg does hatch, and it spawns two gross-ass Mothra-looking larvas. The larvas already know that they're supposed to be the good guys, apparently, and they head towards Godzilla to stop him from killing innocent children. The larva and Godzilla arrive on the island, and the larva move around him using the strategy of using tunnels and stuff. One of the larva bites Godzilla on the tail, which ends up being not such a good idea, as she starts getting tail whipped into oblivion. But eat your heart out, Spider-Man, these larvae have silk spray, which they're using to trap Godzilla all up. Meanwhile, our heroes also arrive on the island via boat, and they're able to rescue the children. Wow, that silk spray really did well, as they got Godzilla completely mummified, and not being able to do anything, he just kind of falls into the ocean. And there's really nothing left to do now. Victorious, the larva, along with the twins, sail back to Infant Island as our heroes wave them goodbye to end the film. 
Now I kind of already tipped it away at the beginning, but it's time to pull up the Godzilla big board to see where I rank this film. And honestly, this one's pretty easy for me. I think this was easily the best Godzilla sequel so far. So here are the new rankings. Godzilla 1954 number one, Mothra vs. Godzilla number two, Godzilla Raids Again number three, and Godzilla vs. King Kong, or excuse me, King Kong vs. Godzilla number four. But this is technically a Mothra film too, so here's a hard decision. Is this better than the original Mothra film? This was actually a really, really, really tough decision, because both this and the Mothra film were really good. But just by a hair, just by a tiny bit, I'm going to say that Mothra 1961 was just a little bit better than this. Just barely, though. So I've said a lot of positive about this movie. Did I have any negatives? Well, just the one obvious thing. Why do you keep attacking Godzilla in the same way? It's always the bombs and the tanks and the giant electrified fence and it never fucking works. Like, is it just, is this supposed to, did the people who make the movie, do Toho Studios hate the Japanese military? Are they trying to tell us that the Japanese military is dumb as shit? Because they've done the same thing four movies in a row, and it hasn't worked any times. It's never worked. It's not gonna work, and I'm really afraid that they're gonna keep doing it in every single freaking movie going forward. But on a more positive note, I think this movie was a good lesson to King Kong vs. Godzilla on how to do a monster vs. monster movie more correctly. Well, first off, we didn't get bored because the human characters were actually good, and they kept the plot interesting. Also, I gotta say, the way they built up Godzilla's reveal was pretty cool. The kind of surprise reveal. I mean, you probably could have guessed with the whole radiation thing. But, you know, just kind of the build up like, oh, what is this? Oh, it's radiation. Oh, where's the radiation came from? Oh, crap, it's Godzilla. Nice. Out of nowhere. And of course, not only was the battle good, but there were multiple battles in multiple forms. We had the original Mothra taking on Godzilla, and then of course the two larvae looking for revenge taking on Godzilla by themselves. And this is just the perfect good versus evil movie as well. They portrayed Mothra as the perfect babyface, sacrificing her life for not only her egg, but the humans as well. But believe it or not, directly after this, they stopped portraying Godzilla as the antagonist. That's because next up, we're going to be introduced to the new main antagonist, King Ghidorah, who we will see in the next Godzilla film titled Ghidorah, the Three-Headed Monster. Yeah, that's right, he's so evil he kicked Godzilla out of the title. It wasn't even Godzilla vs. Ghidorah, no, Ghidorah got the whole ass title to himself. But in conclusion, this was a great monster movie, and definitely a breath of fresh air after two really crappy Godzilla movies followed the original. I don't know if it quite lived up to the original Godzilla, but it definitely lived up to the original Mothra movie, and definitely built off of it well. But unfortunately for the next movie starring King Ghidorah, they went back to their old tactics of rushing out a sequel, as that movie was released just eight months after this one. Will that result in a shitty film? Eh, well, I guess we're gonna have to find out next time. But that is going to do it for my review of Mafra vs. Godzilla. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Join me back here next week for my new King Kong look back at King Kong Escapes, which is the final Toho produced Godzilla film, or excuse me, King Kong film. After that, we'll be going back to the MCU starting Phase 2 with Iron Man 3, and then after that, we'll probably look at Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. But that is going to do it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the description down below. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting me and my channels. You are also in the description down below. My name is Noah Taff. This has been my Godzilla and Mothra look back at Mothra vs. Godzilla. And I'll see you guys next time.